oh, there's so much to think about at the beginning of these things, um, as well as saying hello to everybody and thinking, to what extent do I should I introduce myself and go, and this is Abigail, and she's looking after the breakout rooms, and thank you, Pierre, for letting us uh, take over your space for this evening and to play with it all. And, um, yeah, there's going to be so much stuff going on here. What I'm hoping to share, as well as showing a way of using um, – a webinar in inverted commas as a way to connect people and do breakout rooms do small group activities all that stuff is a way to de-escalate the kind of robust exchanges that you might get between colleagues and instead to turn those moments of tension and potential conflict into opportunities for learning and growth that's where we're going in this call um, it's more about the kind of robust exchanges between colleagues rather than full-on um, conflict negotiation and mediation. When, while clean language has been used in high conflict areas such as um, South Africa, Northern Ireland, Israel, Gaza, and so on and so forth, um, we're not going to get there in two hours. I'm just going to explain a few simple models that I think will help you in a business context. Does that seem okay? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, so one of the things to say about clean language is that it's about working with the, the words that people use that represent the thoughts that they're having. We're making up whatever we think we hear from other people. We're only taking in about three to five percent of the information. The rest is what's called conceptual blending. That is, it's made up. We, all, we think we already know a bunch of stuff. We think we expect a bunch of stuff. And only three to five percent is new and taken in from the environment. And that's the way human beings work. If we didn't make assumptions and we didn't do this making it up thing, we'd never get anything done. We'd be completely overwhelmed by the amount of information coming in from the outside. But clean language starts to unpick some of that and starts to make clear some of the assumptions that we're making. Let me demonstrate with an example. Everybody think of a flower. Canal, what kind of flower is your flower? A lotus. A lotus. Thank you. And um, Thomas, what kind of flower is your flower? Sunflower. A sunflower. Yeah. And the other Thomas, what kind of to flower is your flower? A rose. A rose. So we've got a lotus, a sunflower, a rose. And who else have we got? Um, Wolfgang, what kind of flower is your flower? Mine was a rose as well. Yours was a rose as well. What kind of rose was your rose? Um, a pink one. A pink one. And Thomas de Vries, what kind of rose was your rose? A red one. A red one. Excellent example. Thank you very much indeed. So, you see how this works? We all think of the word flower, and we think, well, everybody knows what a flower is. But as soon as you ask a question or two about it, you discover that everybody had a different flower in mind. A lotus, a sunflower, a rose. Oh, but then we find, well, two people have got the same. A rose. But then you ask another question. It's not the same. A pink rose and a red rose. There's a whole bunch of assumptions that we're making up front about what is meant by a flower. And actually, it's not what we imagine. The assumptions are not true. Is this making sense? I'm, I'm noticing there's things mm -hmm. appearing in the chat and I can't keep talking and keep reading the chat <coughs> at the same time. So if people are saying something in the chat that I need to know, would somebody wave and say what it is? 
I'll assume that whatever's chat happening in the chat is, is not intended for me unless uh, you tell me differently. I'm also hearing bings and bongs every time somebody arrives in the room, which is very distracting, isn't it? Is what I've just said making sense so far? Yep. yep. Any comments or questions about it? I want no, yeah. to ask the Polish lady with the golden gate in the background what you make of it, but I can't pronounce your name. How, how would I pronounce that? If you mean me, it's Katarzyna. Yeah. <laughs> Katarzyna. Yes. So, may I ask you to, to, to ask me the question once more because I was like reading the chat about the Polish group. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> So what's happening in the chat about the Polish group? That's my question. So what someone would like to have a Polish group, uh, I think, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think you've just proved your point, Judy. <laughs> People aren't taking information in. <laughs> we have different channels, like, you know, listening and writing, which is also mm -hmm. uh, interesting. So sorry for, <laughs> for the stress. <laughs> And Scott, what are you making of what I was saying about the Think of a Flower activity? Um, I absolutely love it. Um, I use a similar one uh, when I'm doing group work, which I ask everyone to think of a house. And then I say, was yours a doctor? Because mine's was. <laughs> 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 it's just, all, uh, I work with, uh, very closely with Robin, and we always check words with each other just to make sure we've got the right meaning. Because yeah, it's so uh, easy. Yeah. So easy. Context is different. Yeah. yeah. And some of the, mo the biggest misunderstandings happen when what looks like a common word, a shared word, is actually misunderstood. One of my favorite examples comes from this book here. So this is a, 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 clean language, a book about using clean language with groups. And here, Caitlin Walker talks about an experience she had when she was working with a team. A management team as it happens she asked them asked all the members of the team when this project goes just the way you would like it would be like what and one person says well it will be unclear and the boss goes completely ballistic because he said what are you doing you're, you're always spoiling it we're here to do a kickoff meeting for the project but you're spoiling it already unclear of course you don't want it to be unclear so Caitlin asks, well, for you, boss, what kind of unclear is your unclear? And the boss says, well, it's like banging your head against a brick wall. And then she asked the person who'd spoken first, what kind of unclear is your unclear? And Sarah said, unclear for her was like a landscape opening up in front of us where we can explore and make our own path. And you can see how that unclear could have caused a huge row. But by asking a few questions, you get to find out what's really meant, or you get closer to what's really meant by the word. So it's time for another activity. In this next activity, we're going to be um, doing something very similar to that think of a flower activity. But I'm inspired here by something that um, you probably have heard Pierre do before. Pierre has asked a number of times, what kind of agile is your <laughs> agile? <laughs> and in this next small group activity, you're going to be taking it in turns to talk about what kind of agile is your agile. So everybody in their talking turn, you're going to talk about your kind of agile. And the person you're partnered with is going to be asking you some questions about that to find out more about your kind of agile, to see if you can find out what's different about their kind of agile from your kind of agile. And the two, sorry, sorry, you've got to go, Heidi. I'll see you again soon. It was nice to see you, <laughs> even if briefly. So um, the two questions you're going to be using are two clean language questions. I've put them in the chat and you might want to write them down because the chat doesn't always sustain when you go to breakout rooms. The two questions are, 
what kind of X and is there anything else about X? And in these questions, X stands for one or more of the other person's words. And you can use the questions in any, any order as, as many times as you like within the time box that you're given. Could you repeat the last part, sorry? Yeah, so you can use the questions in any order as many times as you like within the time box. And I'll explain the time box in a moment. But you'll need a demonstration because this won't make much sense if you haven't seen this before. Abby, are you okay to be the demonstration subject? I think so. <laughs> So, what kind of Agile is your Agile? Gosh, um, so it's an Agile where I'm reacting to whatever comes up. And what kind of reacting? Um, it's a reacting where I'm very focused on the task in hand. Mm. And what kind of comes up? Uh, things that aren't expected, that are out of my, my focus, I guess. And is there anything else about whatever comes up? Um, well, when I'm being agile, I'm not stressed by whatever comes up. Mm -hmm. And when you're being agile, you're not stressed by whatever comes up. What kind of not stressed? It's something to connect to this focus. I've, I've got this image of uh, a sort of a, a focused light, like a torch light going forward. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Perfect demonstration. You'll run out of time about there. I get really curious in, about Abigail's kind of agile, but I'm not going to let that um, get in my way. So in this next activity, you're going to be in pairs. And Abby is going to do her best to put everybody in pairs, excluding the people who don't want to participate, and putting people in groups that speak the same language. Where you're not speaking English, you will have to make an approximate translation of these questions. But do your best. It won't, it, it's not going to be the official version. Abby can give us the French version. Um, and it may be that Pierre can give us the German version. Um, but uh, fundamentally, make an approximate translation and see if you can stick to roughly these questions. You're going to have two minutes each way and at the end of two minutes you're going to two minutes the, so the end of four minutes you're going to be called back into the room is everybody comfortable with what the activity is going to be so, okay abby fine. what mm. chance have we got of doing the whole um language thing is uh, it too complicated i had i had created perfect threes um and fours according to the language thing but i'm now jiggling that around again <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> Rather you than me. <laughs> um, and so it, it's not entirely simple doing breakout rooms on the fly. Um, but I thought it would be interesting to see whether mm. it was possible. And I know that you guys would be okay with the experiment. Yeah, I'm really curious about how the moderation is going to work. So how we can use it afterwards. Yeah. No, me too. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I'm watching very carefully, a master at work. <laughs> I'm just wondering how we can keep that time box running. I mean, in my experience, we used that several times. And in breakout rooms, it's really difficult to keep track of the time, especially when someone talks. <laughs> Usually, we ended up with maybe half the tasks done because only then one or yeah. two people finish their talking. So if you have a timer to hand, please grab it and set it for four minutes so that when you go to the breakout rooms you will be able to track the time and swap over at two minutes abby shout when you're ready i think i'm ready okay have we got an odd number or even number if i'm in am i in or, or you're not out in? please well, join the breakouts you're in 18 but you need to refuse yeah. okay hello salut pierre oh uh, you're muted or maybe i'm muted uh salut mathieu c'est moi. <rire> Ça va C'est la première fois qu'on se voit. C'est la première fois qu'on se voit, tout à fait. Mmh. Euh, moi, je connais Julie parce qu'elle est venue faire une, dé une démo de Zoom euh, au salon de printemps de Oslo, à l'université de Téduclin en France chez Jennifer Degan. Donc, je ne je je connais pas. C'est pas grave. <rire> tu es plutôt dans le clean ou plutôt dans l'agile euh, Pour moi, pour moi c'est les deux. Moi, je fais des transformations, je fais des grosses transformations agiles. 
euh, dans, dans, dans le digital ou plutôt au VUCA. Et euh, je, je connais euh, Julie depuis deux ans à peu près. J'ai fait sa, sa formation aussi et je l'ai tiré dans, dans les groupes agiles dans lesquels, dans les think tanks dont je fais partie. D'accord. Et euh, parce que je trouve que pour moi, c'est l'agilité, on a un souci premier qui est un souci, un souci d'alignement. L'aliment, ça marche par euh, l'écoute. Et moi, j'utilise beaucoup clean, euh, clean Language. Donc, il y a deux ans, j'ai commencé. And what kind of agile is your agile Parce que tout le monde se débattait. Oui, moi, je suis agile. Moi, je suis pas agile. Dit, ah, bah, arrêtez ce débat à la con, qui sert à rien. Et, euh, et je me suis rendu compte qu'en faisant ça avec mes équipes, donc, euh, je dois faire. Et ensuite, il a posé la même question à leurs collègues. Et je me suis rendu compte que le niveau de stress baissait. Euh, le fait de poser, donc, quel genre d'agile est ton agile Quel genre de clean language est ton clean language donc, je vais te poser la question, Mathieu. Oui. Quel genre de clean language est en clean Alors, quel, clean, quel genre de clean language est mon clean language Moi, c'est un clean language qui est curieux et qui est, euh, qui est curieux et qui est ouvert et qui est to the point. Et, et, et euh, qu qu'est-ce qu que tu peux me dire d'autre par rapport à getting to the point To the point, euh, c'est to the point to your point. C'est de ton point, si je travaille avec toi, je vais être curieux de ce qui se passe chez toi plus que de mettre mon information dans le champ. Je vais aller chercher l'information qu'il y a chez toi que tu ne sais pas forcément me dire qu'elle est là, mais on va avec, les bonnes, avec deux trois bonnes questions, on va pouvoir être curieux ensemble c'est faire sortir un objet sur lequel on va pouvoir travailler ensemble. D'accord. Et quand ça marche pour le mieux, ça, ça marche comme quoi quand ça marche pour le mieux, ça marche, euh, c'est fluide, c'est euh, confortable, euh, c'est efficace. Euh... Quel genre de fluide, de confortable et d'efficace est ton fluide confortable et efficace euh, C'est un fluide confortable et efficace ou c'est l'objet dont on parle qui est au centre et pas euh, toi et moi, ou nos rôles, ou nos rangs. D'accord. Et on peut être curieux d'une même chose et travailler ensemble sur quelque chose. Euh, et, et même éventuellement pas être, être et même on peut éventuellement même ne pas être d'accord sur ce qu'on sur, 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 sur ce dont on cause. Mais je vais être curieux de ta rose et tu vas être curieux de la mienne. D'accord. Et euh, où est-ce que ça se passe ce type de curiosité par rapport à soi et par rapport à, à soi-même Ça se passe quelque part là-devant, entre nous. <rire> Entre nous, euh, plus particulièrement où Même dans, dans un espace virtuel qui serait entre nous, dans un espace entre, mm -hmm. qui est à la fois l'espace qui nous relie et qui nous sépare. D'accord. Et cet espace qui nous relie, qui nous sépare, est-ce qu'il est, est, qu est fluide Est-ce qu'il est stable Est-ce qu'il est tangible Ou est-ce qu'il est volatile Il est tout ça à la fois. <rire> Donc, je t'ai fait une petite collection de, de, de clean questions mais c'est un peu comme ça que je procède pour, pour, rendre, pour essayer de rendre la, la conversation euh, pas clean méthodologique. Parce que souvent, le risque, il y a des trucs que tu te rends très, très rapidement compte. Tu, bon, d'accord, tu me fais, tu m'as transformé en five ways en clean language. <rire> je te vois venir de loin. Et, et, et le truc, c'est vraiment, le, le, le truc qui est un peu compliqué, c'est passer au, au stade métaphorique. Absolument. La grande force. Euh, et c'est pour ça que, alors, moi, je suis plus dans le clean que dans l'agile. Je suis en train de découvrir l'agile. En fait, j'avais beaucoup de résistance par rapport à l'agile parce que dans pas mal de cas où j'avais vu de l'agile, c'était un gros bordel parce qu'il y a des questions de cap, de confiance, de rôle, de machin. Euh, et euh, donc, il y a à apprendre. À... C'est une polarité aussi entre trop cadré, top down. There's a lovely quote from uh, Franklin Delaney Roosevelt when he was talking about coming out of the, uh, you know, the, the 1936 recession, and it's all about experimenting. Okay, so you're back in the main room, and you are all muted by default, so feel free to unmute yourself if you're somewhere quiet. Um, how was that experience? Oh, first, apologies if there were some technical hiccups. This was an experiment to see if we could manage the whole language thing and the people who didn't want to participate and all of that. Um, so I think it went reasonably well from what I understand. Um, any comments on the process of going to breakout rooms with uh, people who spoke your language? Did it work? work? For me. That's good. good for you. 
Wow. Excellent. It was excellent. Good you idea, but well for me. Yeah. We're Good idea, but technical issues. <laughs> there were some technical issues. There, there were a few yes. people who didn't manage to make it to their breakout room or found themselves alone for a little while. Yeah. But worth a try, I think. Ooh. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll see how that goes in the next activity. Right. What about the activity itself? What was your experience of being asked those questions? Um, you know, uh, I would say that, you know, it's more of, you know, we are trying to understand, you know, what uh, someone is having in their, you know, thought assumptions. We are trying to extract that by asking some powerful questions, probing them, you know, making, you know, them comfortable so that they can speak and, you know, the true, uh, their true assumptions or your know, thought can come out. Yeah, the questions help the thoughts to come out. Mm -hmm. It feels a bit like a guardrail or a handrail uh, that on the one hand gives you something right to hold on to. At the same time, it limits, um, you know, your expression or you're maybe asking differently. This is your experience of asking the question. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm really curious about your experience of answering the questions of being asked. Kunal. Yes. So what, I noticed uh, was happening with me when I was asked the question again and again and repeatedly was that I was kind of forced or invited to leave my preconceived notions about a particular thing and really think anew about what a particular word meant for me and what did I actually want to say. So that was uh, inducing a very um, strong kind of introspection, which I when you're normally talking, you might not be doing at that deep a level. Mm -hmm. So it's encouraging deep introspection. Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And also, yeah, kind of that experience, like really, really looking for the perfect word to describe that introspect, like what was there? <laughs> How do I describe <laughs> it now? That was really nice because the bridge I've built there, it's still, I still feel it and that makes something. Mm. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Interesting. It gently forced me to organize my thoughts, even if it's about a topic I know really well. Mm -hmm. yes. so organizing your thoughts, even about this topic that you know really well. And Toby, what was your experience? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go with um, what, what's been said so far. Um, uh, the questions did help me to process or you know give me a line or direction of thought mm -hmm. yeah. thank you and did you manage to find some difference between you and your partner did anyone find that the other person's agile was exactly the same as theirs no no definitely not excellent that means that we've got something that we disagree about <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just talking about something which is more important to me, but, but I would not say that um, Chris thinks what, what's important to him, that it's not important to me. It's like just yeah. different prioritized. Just different. Yeah, yeah. You exactly. know? it's slightly different, but I, I wouldn't, um, it's, it's yeah. not a hill I'd die on. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, nice. Thank you. Everyone has his own position when he is asking and answering. <laughs> and his own experiencing about the subject. Yeah. And the time issue is also important. It was quite quick. So <laughs> oh. if you think longer and don't have to rush, I think you have also more time to um, find out if you have more in agree. So if you touch an animal from the front side or from the back side, then you will describe it differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's that difference. And yes, if you'd had more time, you'd have found out even more. And the reason for making it nice and short when some people are doing this for the very first time is that for some people, asking these questions can be quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily easy for people to just pick up these questions and start asking them because they are constraining. They force your thinking into certain paths and they force you to listen. 
because you can't put anything in the X spot if you haven't listened. And that produces some interesting results. Olaf. Yes, but on the other hand, I'm feeling very uncomfortable uh, if I'm more or less uh, shot out of, uh, by a machine gun. What, 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 what this, what that? Uh, I would like to sometimes surround these questions. And even more, if somebody asks for something, I would like to get a feeling what is the background of his question, only to say what they think. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, I didn't understand this part, but would you please explain more this mm -hmm. and more that? I would feel it more gentle. Yeah, absolutely. There are lots and lots of other brilliant questions in the world. These are just two questions that happen to be useful for this particular thing. Um, they also are very, very sensitive to voice tone. And if you fire them at people as, as a machine gun, they will not have the kind of effect that they have if they're asked in a gentle tone. Um, but you're absolutely right, Olaf. There are lots and lots of other wonderful questions in the world. I'm not at all denying that there are plenty of other good questions. These questions, however, are part of the clean language question set. And one of the things that's, well, there are a number of things that are interesting about clean language. Clean language uses the other person's own words. That in itself produces some interesting effects. It forces the questioner to listen because otherwise they can't ask the questions. Hearing your own words back to you has an interesting effect in terms of rapport. When people use your own words, you feel heard, much more so than if people paraphrase, which people used to be advised to do in active listening was to paraphrase what people said. But if instead you parrot phrase, that builds rapport. So that's one thing that's interesting about the questions. Another thing that's interesting, what makes them clean in their original definition is that they've been stripped down as far as possible of assumptions and metaphors and preconceptions. So they're intended to just carry very simple meanings and to minimize the input from the person asking questions. That has all sorts of interesting effects in different circumstances. In this circumstance, when we're just talking about understanding somebody else, the great thing about it is that it is pretty neutral. It doesn't bring in lots of preconceptions and assumptions and biases from the questioner. So these questions have been used in um, things like accident investigation interviews to really understand what the person is describing, what was the situation? What happened just before, what happened just after? What were all the technical details of this situation? Which is the opposite of going in and in an accident investigation and saying, um, did you notice the, the blue bus coming towards you? Which as you probably know, research has shown that if the question even hints at something, at some evidence piece, people will imagine that they saw or heard that evidence, even when it never appeared. So these questions are neutral. And in the context of a disagreement, that makes a huge difference, particularly when it's a disagreement about a word that you think you both understand, like unclear because everybody knows what unclear means, don't they? So you could go in and ask, well, I, yeah, unclear. I appreciate that uh, unclear is probably different for you than for me. But um, when it's unclear, how are you managing about the wall? And that would be an unclean question. But because you assume there has to be a wall when it's unclear, because it's like you're banging your head against a brick wall when it's unclear, then you'll ask about it. So neutral questions are more effective. I feel I've been rabbiting on for too long. Comments, questions, yes, suggestions. I have a question. Andrea. I was also reading a lot of uh, a lot about NLP and 
I came to the conclusion that um, to build the rapport and to use the same words, like my coachee, for example, I felt it like it's like a little bit of manipulation, like from my perspective. What do you think about that? This is what I mentioned at the very beginning of the call. I think that some of the te the original clean language devised by David Grove was intended to not influence. It was intended to not manipulate. Accidentally, David Grove created some of the most influential, most powerful influencing techniques that exist. <laughs> so whenever you're using this stuff, be, be aware of your intention. You, these things can be used with an intention to manipulate or they can be used with an intention to be neutral. An intention to be curious, an intention to find out. And I think that's important to say because you will find people on the internet saying that clean language is all about not influencing. Either they're lying or they're kidding themselves. Or they don't really know what they're talking about. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's really a good point to know. Yeah. You're pretty right. But the thing is, it's changed the way you're asking the question is, it's calming you down. And also the receiver is getting more calm. So I use it a lot since oh, the last two and a half years. But in a way, how, how we communicate uh, with each other in my projects, in my, at my customers everywhere. And the, the idea is, my idea, intention is always to move as fast as possible in the metaphors. Because I do believe metaphor is like the drawing, is the, the, the roots of, of language. And I, I, I want to have the big picture, the biggest picture as possible. So I'm just in the position, I'm, I'm a curious child to say, oh, let me show you a picture. And I'm astonished. Say, oh, that's cool. Oh, you're a gardener. Mm. What kind of garden is your garden? Oh, I'm starting dreaming with, with the, my colleague. And, and, and then you can see how, how the light is coming and all uh, bubbling in his mind. He's, he tried to see, he's, he's solving his problem. And if, in, if you are in a group, the intention is a little bit different. It's more like uh, collecting nodes. Is I have to collect as much data as possible. Then we can link different nodes to see what makes us uh, us part of the group. So, uh, so I'm, I'm an agile coach, but I'm more a complexity thinker and researcher. Is so this is very linked to complexity thinking. And I'm going to pull us back to what we were going to do, because if one of the things that I said I'd show you is a way of running a session which isn't a lot of talking. So I want to break us into breakout groups in just a moment. Abby, can you put us into uh, threes and fours this time? While I ask Katarzyna to say what you had to say. Uh, it was a kind of question, maybe a statement. I think it's very important to understand what kind of rule do I have when I ask these questions and what kind of attitude do I have? Because when we think about mindset, widow of tolerance, things like that, many assumptions we don't know. So mm. working as a coach, we go through many years of clarifying what do I think, what do I bring to the client without knowing that. So it needs to be careful. And I like Pierre, the idea as an agile coach, I maybe have another level of setting than when I go to the coaching with the client or into the mediation, it's different. And this is important to remember. And I would like to know how do you see it? It's, a, it's too big a question for me right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to hold the, even the question at the moment because there is a lot going on in this, this call at the moment with a lot of people, a lot of different conversations going on. Okay. So what I'm, like, what I'm going to invite you all to do is go to breakout rooms and have a small conversation in threes and fours about what we've touched on so far, what you are learning from it, and what you would like from the rest of the call. You're going to spend about five or ten minutes just uh, connecting with the other people in your group. Mm -hmm. When you come back, we're going to take a short stand up and stretch break mm -hmm. before moving on. Mm -hmm. Everybody understanding? Hello, Jürgen. Hello, Kat. Hi, Katja. Kathy. Hi. <laughs> German English. 
England, please. Even that I'm I'm living in Germany, but my German is so good. So where are you from? I'm from Finland. Okay, who the pay there? Oh wow! <laughs> so what are you doing, Katty? Katty. Is a cat. Mm, nope. Uh, but ah uh, yeah, I'm looking for a new job because because of the corona, I lose my job here. And yeah, I'm studying my second master and trying to figure out what I want to do in my life. Welcome. It, it never ends. I know. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. And I cannot like people are asking why I'm still smiling. I'm like, it's like this shit happens and you have to get through it. And otherwise, if you are stuck somewhere, you cannot create something new. So it's not smiling, it's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But how about Jörg and you? Please what? Uh, I'm looking Jörg and... Uh... Jürgen, you're yes. much better Hi. now, thanks. Oh, yes. <laughs> still still getting, getting used to it. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm also living in Ludwigsburg. What, what uh, took you to Ludwigsburg, Kati? Well, my husband works for Bosch and he's working... Oh, uh, I, also, his... I also work for Bosch. Oh, okay. In Upstart or...? <laughs> Uh, no, in, in Feuerbach and Ludwigsburg. Oh, he Just was working. Retired. Oh, okay. He was working there earlier before we moved to US and now back to. Okay. I, I just sent you uh, a LinkedIn invitation. I think it's uh, worth having an exchange. Very good. So, Pierre, can you, can you re explain the task, what we have to do? We have to connect to each other. Yes. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and I think it was also like how we understand this, um, what she was explaining about it. I think mine, my mind was going somewhere over there and just thinking about my past and about the communication and the language. Because now when I change the language, not my own mother tongue, there is always like this ex extra ac aspect. How much, how, how is it more difficult? and how we understand the words, because it's not yeah. our first yeah. language. Yeah. Don't make your life too complicated. We already started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our, yeah. our first connection was, I'm from Finland. I told you, I told mm. you about my ex -girlfriend. That's the first connection. The second question you make, you with Jürgen. Oh, you're working at Bosch. I'm also from Bosch. It's also a connection. Yes. <laughs> and we're working in the same, uh, we're living in the same town, obviously. I assume at two different ends, but uh, perfect. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and Pierre, you are living in Heidelberg? Heidelberg. Yeah. Yes. I was just thinking that we will come there on Saturday if it doesn't rain, because I want to get out. I'm stuck. Uh, yeah, come, come to Heidelberg. You can come. We have, uh, again, a couple of tourists and the small shops are open, but don't forget your masks. Mm, yeah. Because okay. even if you go into McDonald's, you see masks. <laughs> Yeah, but, I was thinking like I could be like a German and have my own sandwich or something with me and just go for a walk next to the river or something like that. No, you have a plenty, plenty of uh, possibilities to go on the Philosophenweg, which, which is mm. uh, climbing and you see uh, um, all uh, monastery, which is from the 14th century and the ruins and something. There's a lot of plenty of things to do, to do here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I really need to just get out. <laughs> yeah, it's a lovely place. I know. I have been there a couple of times and I really like the city. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool getting uh, um, uh, blocked here. Yeah. Even without child children. <laughs> I'm alone here, so oh. it'll be a little bit crazy. Uh, you can walk a, a couple of things. You can go to the castle. You can go. Everything is quite open, but not shopping. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not missing the shopping. I'm just and missing no, people. <laughs> and no restaurants. Okay, you can see people. Not that much, that usual, but you can see people. Yeah. We, had, we had bicycle traffic jam this afternoon. I thought it began oh. at 6 p.m. as well. Ah, so, so there are a couple, but six, six o'clock Central European time. You see, PA, everybody's confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not confused, you're just bloody stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not London, it's Germany. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Let's say okay. Central Europe. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a new standard in blunt. You're not uh, whatever. You're bloody stupid. Okay. Well, <laughs> how are you, Pierre? I'm very well. Not never polite. That's my brand. That's my brand. Okay. So that statement behind you is not a joke. It's actually the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I thought the radical candor talk was next week. <laughs> oh, hello, Scott. Uh, Pierre, we are excusing your French. Everything's fine. Okay, so wearing my let's have some connecting events hat, one of the rules that I tend to use is that within an hour we should also have always have five minutes of break. So, don't disconnect from the call, but turn off your video, turn off your audio, walk away from your computer and rest your eyes for three or four minutes. We will regroup at three minutes past the hour. The thing that's in dispute and everybody listens to the answers. And when you now know what everybody means by the word in dispute, then the facilitator or the coach or whoever's leading the conversation can ask. And when it's like that for you, and like that for you, what would you each like to happen? Now, what would you like to happen is another clean language question. We haven't gone into that during this call, but what it does is direct people's attention to what they want and away from what they don't want. It's a very powerful question. But this little um, de-escalation process will do some interesting things. Sorry, question. Judy, can you repeat the statement again? So um, the question, the, the two, the, you, the process is two parts. It starts with using the clean language questions, what kind of anything else, to clarify what each person means by the word in dispute. Everybody listens to the answers. The facilitator then asks a different question. And when it's like that for you and like that for you, what would you each like to happen? So you may be able to see that process on a slide behind me. Mm -hmm. If you are in gallery view, you might want to sw quickly swap to, spot to speaker view so that you can read the writing. Um, but that's the simple process. What would you, when, when it's like that for you and like that for you, what would you like to happen? What would you each like to happen? So when boss unclear is like banging your head against a wall and when Sarah unclear is like walking into an, an environment where we can find our own path what would you each like to happen and that's the de-escalation process that clean language and the Caitlin Walker in particular <laughs> has used and finds really really effective are people willing to have a quick go with this so for this we're going to need threes Abby, um, of people who are willing to participate. So again, if there are people who are not willing to participate, they need to put an N next to their name on screen. And then we, we don't include them in the numbers. I su suspect I'm just too ignorant of the topic to be useful, so I'll stick no, it in there. It's, lack of, it's not lack of will. No, I think, Simon, you'll be fine. It, it all, will make, all will become clear. Well, okay, but I remember I arrived an hour late, so I've got yeah. no context. Don't, don't join your breakouts yet. I haven't Sorry, given the... I did it too soon. Uh, the other thing for you, what would each of you like to happen? And uh, clearly this is not going to be very um, exact science. It will just be an interesting experience to see what emerges when you try this de-escalation process in this highly artificial situation. But um, without giving it some kind of try, I don't think there was much chance of you trying it in the wild. So that's the that's the task. Is everybody OK with the task? Yeah. If you find yourself with not enough people to do this activity, come back to the main room and we will uh, reassign you and add, add you to, a f to threes to make fours. But oh. hopefully we should mostly be threes who are willing to participate. That needs to include enough brain cells to be able to co-op to participate as well. Okay, Judy. We might hack them. 
Yeah, so Simon, if you want to be the observer, then or, or just be one of the two <laughs> participants, whichever you prefer. Um, and Maria as well, because you missed the first chunk. Um, probably the best role to be in is being one of the people talking about their kind of agile. And the least Thank useful you. role for you as newcomers is the facilitator. Thank Ready you. Ready to go, Abby? What's the time box? Time box is, uh, sorry, five minutes. Hello. 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 How are you? Surviving. <laughs> and we never met Victoria. Pleased to meet you. I think we met at one time. I was there. Uh, at that time when a meets up it took a place uh, <laughs> to face to face. <laughs> so I think I met you. But anyway, nice to meet you today. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you both. <laughs> it's, uh, nice to meet you, Chris, too. Pleasure, man. So I think so. Uh, uh, sounds like Victoria. We can speak German. So this session will be in German, indeed. Uh, okay. No problem. No trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who would Hello. like to volunteer as the victims? Sorry, coaches. <laughs> who's going to lead? Victims. We have four. We have four. Okay. One perhaps an observer. One observer, one facilitator, and two victims. Thanks, <laughs> okay, so who's the facilitator? I would, I would prefer to be the victim since I missed half of the session before. <laughs> that's that's okay, no problem at all, rather than I'm the second victim. <laughs> okay, no problem. And who, who, who wants to facilitate? Pierre? I'm the observer. You're the observer. Fantastic. Okay. You've done all the hard work organizing it anyway. So, okay. So, Victoria, what, what sort of Agile is your Agile? <laughs> so, um, I understand Agile is a kind of um, active phase, um, which I'm present in. So it's not in continuous uh, status, but um, it's a kind of, um, I would say, if you're familiar with NLP uh, definition, it's a kind of trans um, session with yourself or with myself, where I'm very concentrated. I'm not um, distracted um, by other things. I can easily find what I really feel and what I really need and I can realize that I need some more time to answer the question or less time, whatever, and I can actively listen. So this is my agile. Okay. And I'm very aware of the time box. So Radovan, what is your kind of agile? Hmm. Uh, my agile is uh, more of a mindset. Uh... Uh, so more of a, like a life attitude, uh, actually pretty close to, to improv and lean startup and those concepts. So it's about uh, being agile uh, and getting benefit from it. Not so much about these specific tools, even though they are a good starting point uh, to to be agile. What what kind of lean startup? Uh, basically. Uh, the ideas of exp uh, of starting uh, uh, with mistakes and exposing mistakes early um, versus rather late and uh, costly. So, excuse me while, while I read the question. Um, <laughs> and and so when it's like Victoria's agile and with Radovan's lean startup agile what would you each like to happen i mean maybe you'd like to take start victoria so i would like um to prevent mistakes it would fit to my concept and also to rule one's uh, precaution measures of preventing mistakes now okay i mean uh, what, what, what kind of mistakes um i just heard um recognizing um, or recognizing early mistakes or early exposure to mistakes so I kept it to this uh, wording um, so in my agile that would be a state uh, where I could um, yeah prevent um, such kind of mistakes or a kind of mistake yeah. okay 
And so, Radovan, um, what would you like to happen? You love me now. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing to add here. No, nothing, nothing to add, okay. So you agree 100% that Victoria's Agile is absolutely fine. Let's carve it in stone, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we might be too closely aligned here. <laughs> so, Victoria, um, how do you feel about this? About what? What about exactly Radovan do you mean? <laughs> how do you feel about Redavan agreeing 100% with um, your version of Agile? He, he's very much a lean... Um, lean startup model. You feel that matches yours? Mm, it's a little bit um, general for me, so it's not so concrete. So um, I cannot get to touch or to that. So perhaps an example would be helpful. It could be. Rather than? Oh, uh, so for example, uh, I teach students uh, agile and usually uh, they are hiding the work they are doing uh, in the university and the instructors show them uh, the grade at the very end. Uh, so uh, I need to make them overcome this idea by saying them that, or showing them it's okay to make mistakes and uh, showing them early, to get the trust, the mutual trust. Uh, so uh, they understand it's okay if we show the mistakes early compared to the big problem at the very end of, say, the course, and actually that the idea which is uh, pretty much useful in all the projects fail early. Mm -hmm. So if I understand correctly, so being kind of brave enough to be exposed to mistakes, uh, that would be a part of Agile, right? Which actually aligns well with the ideas of uh, transparency and honesty uh -huh. uh, that we are teaching or practicing in Scrum, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would tend to agree to, to this part. Um, so exposing yourself uh, to mistakes, it helps also to learn um, us as well as a personality. And um, I think Agile um, would in this, yeah, let me think, um, just a second, I lost my idea. So I would say, you would become agile through exposing to be um, by being exposed to mistakes, um, so that you could recognize similar mistakes and just one simply do them. This is what I would um, mm -hmm. catch up for myself. So you would also agree, right? So it's a fact about growing uh, through exposing yourself uh, to mm -hmm. mistakes. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to call it there. I think we have resolved any conflict. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we start with the conflict now? <laughs> yeah, we forgot seconds. the conflict. <laughs> so go, go, go. <laughs> yes, please, conflict. You left, you, you left me dangling. There's no conflict there. <laughs> conflict sounds so yeah, but your students will be always blamed by other students. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> Alright, this was fun. I'll see you in the main room, I guess. Oh, okay. lovely. <laughs> I'll see you back in the main room. Thank you. <laughs> you have to work Thank with you. I've given you too much time is whether anybody comes straight back as soon as we click the button. And nobody did. So please unmute yourself if you reasonably can, because you're all muted by default when you came back in from the breakout rooms. Let's hear from a few people what's something you learned <coughs> during that activity. Please wave if you have something to share. Chris. One big thing I learned um, is that contact switching between the two people was actually remarkably difficult because <clears> you're <throat> focused on one person and then you focus on the second one and then you come back and say, you said this, and you're suddenly thinking, I can't remember a word what you said, because I've been focusing on the other, the other person. Mm. And, that, and my, my answer to that would be to actually jot down just a few keywords, a few notes, just to jog my memory. I'm yeah. sure it's an age thing, it's all right. But um, notes, 
the one thing I need to take away from this. Mm. I, I, believe you're, I believe you're right, and I don't think it is an age thing. Um, I th <laughs> it's, it's possible to train yourself to remember more of this stuff yes. and to hold more information simultaneously. Mm. But I, I, having taught this stuff for a long time now, mm. younger people also find it challenging. Rebecca. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> So, yeah, I actually took notes, Chris, that really helped. <laughs> I have this uh, notes on my laptop, so that you really helps. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just told the, the two in my team, I was the facilitator as well, that, yeah, I, I really got goosebumps when I heard both of them talking about, like, their Agile. I mean, we had the situation that they had a very similar way of thinking about Agile. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, as the facilitator, it was like this moment where it's like, oh, wow, there are people from like different countries and different backgrounds, kind of like having not the same, but a very similar idea about Agile and that it like spreads, you know, <laughs> out mm. of the world. I mean, it's not the same, same, you know, there's always a difference in there, but there are like the, the roots seem to be like very common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, uh, if I may add, um, so I, unfortunately I didn't take notes, so this might all be vapor rare because I didn't remember it right. But um, uh, I had the feeling that we had more of a difference initially in the in the opinions, okay. and um, uh, and uh, uh, through the conversation, uh, we really felt there was a convergence, uh, which was. Awesome. I, I, as a facilitator, I really didn't do much mm -hmm. than following your script. Uh, and I, I think we concluded at the end that there was uh, really much more convergence, which was awesome. It almost felt like autopilot, right? It almost <laughs> felt that way very naturally. That was a very new experience for me. And I deliberately, I, I really had to bite my tongue. I deliberately stayed out of making any comments myself. So only really asking questions. I let the others two jump in if, uh, you know, if I'm over um, emphasizing this. But uh, yeah, that's at least my impression. Very positive. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you very much, Wolfgang. <laughs> Thank you. It's good. <laughs> Excellent. Who else had something to add? Thomas De Vries, I thought, think I saw your hand go up. Yeah, I had a nice chat with Jan and Babs, uh, and they were both describing their ideal uh, Agile, or what Agile meant for them. Uh, and in the end, because I'm interested in, in metaphors and like what picture or what uh, symbol would you choose uh, uh, to describe Agile, and then Jan, he said, ah, a tunnel. While Babs was saying more like clay, something I could mold. So then we tried to, what would you, what could you like to have happen if a tunnel and clay would, would meet? Um, so that was a fun conversation. Interesting. Thank you. And Pierre? Yeah, so I did, did this a couple of, of years and I'm very happy that you feel also it's awesome, the information you got. It. And, and, and I never explain Argent at all. And I always start uh, even Argent meetups, whatever or trainings just with that question and in, in his, and you will discover common patterns which is crazy i think it's crazy one trick if you have a large audience and if you can't manage time uh, short time large audience is i use cascading questioning meaning not in the way it is more i ask let's say judy the question and what kind of agile is your agile and when usually you give your answers, now Juju, pick up someone in the room and ask him the question. Meaning you start being the questionnaire, the person who's questioning, and so on and so on and so on. And then you will have a bigger change. And we're getting faster to some kind of consensus, which is crazy. Mm. I was always astonished. I'm more like, like a kid like in front of a chocolate box. Say, what happened here? This is insane, right? It is quite amazing how this stuff works and it's very easy to fall in love with it and to get quite excited about it. So there are bunches of things that you can, um, where you can find out more about this and I'll, I'll share a couple of links about clean language in a moment. Before that, I've sh just shared in the chat a couple of links about web events that connect. So that's the this kind of format of running web events. If you're interested in finding out about that, I've just shared some links in the chat. In a moment, I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to share a Mentimeter where I'm going to ask you to share a couple of words about what kind of Agile is your Agile. So we get a lot of information um, from the group quickly about the different kinds of Agile that are in play. Um, and then we'll, we'll have time for questions because some people have got to go. So let's, let's do the essentials first. So the Mentimeter, um, I'm going to put a link in the chat. Um, bear with me a second. So, or otherwise you can go, if you've got a second device, go to menti.com and use the code 404741 and we'll build a word cloud out of your kind of agile. Hopefully you're seeing my screen where um, a word cloud is forming. What kind of agile is your agile? Fascinating. Only one word mm -hmm. each. One or two words, I think. Well, one entry each. One entry each. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else still doing the Mentimeter thing? Can I stop sharing? <laughs> okay so with all of that that is the end of the official stuff that i had to share i hope you found it useful i'm open to questions Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yep um, can you tell us some more about this clean influencing thing you mentioned earlier? <laughs> so um, you'll find on, on judyreese.co.uk, I've written a couple of blog posts about it, but we haven't written books about it yet. But we've put together a thing we call the collaborative influence cycle. Um, the way we have it drawn is that basically when when you want to be effective at influencing somebody, people imagine that the most effective influence happens when you talk at somebody. Now, we wish that were true. We dream that that was true. But if that would be, were true, then all we'd need to do is talk over slides in a, in a webinar and everybody would understand what we were saying. But that's not how it works. What really needs to happen is if you want to influence somebody, the first thing that needs to happen is you need to pay attention. Listen, listen, and listen some more. And guide attention with questions, like the clean language questions, but other questions are available, until you really understand where they're coming from. Because when you understand where they're coming from, then that's the right time to introduce your pitch because then you know how your pitch fits with what they want. Um, that's the lightning summary. Does that make sense? I prefer the word guiding instead of influencing. I don't mm -hmm. know why. I think it influencing has a negative. Uh, that's your kind of influencing. Yeah. yeah so, so once upon a time, I was playing games about what kind of manipulators you will manipulate and getting really interested in how different people were using the words like influencing, manipulating, um, guiding, because there, there are lots, there are just as many different definitions of all that stuff as there are definitions of, um, of agile. And some people have um, very negative connotations with any kind of influence. And other people say, well, we're all in, we can't not influence, we're, we're spending our lives influencing. So getting good at it and understanding what we're doing is actually a healthy approach than pretending it's not happening. What do you do in conflict negotiating if you really agree with one person's viewpoint and not the others? <laughs> good question. Um, oh. Now, I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a conflict negotiator, 
<laughs> no, we're using but, the language, yeah. But. Yeah. So the, the, the trick is, what is it that you want to have happen? What are you there for? It's a bit like being a, an agile coach. What's your role in this situation? Uh, absolutely. And here, Do no harm. You, you, get, you, you get one part of the answers. It's about negotiation. This, com this comes from complex system theory. It means if you want to move forward, you have to negotiate from one point to another. So it's, if you have a conflict, you have to go to negotiate. Meaning what kind of stuff... Okay, maybe I influence, but you influence because you're here. You're part of the system. So you influence just by your presence. And, and now is what can I leave away from myself to have a deal, to have a win-win situation, which is quite complicated. So let's say Donald Trump is not a good negotiator, but what Merkel made is a think collective, it's collective, and we have a common agreement for a small personal time. Uh, it's a negotiation. So it's, in fact, it's negotiating. That's also how you have leadership in, in an agile environment, what we call agile. Everyone has a gut feeling what it means. It means you're just having a win-win-win situation where everyone has nothing to lose. Is balanced or aligned. I like win-win. Yeah. yeah. There's an interesting piece about this stuff that... Um, being a successful uh, negotiator in this kind of situation doesn't mean denying that you have a position on the thing. Yeah, you have to think very pragmatically here. Anglo-Saxon pragmatism means we want to have a deal that we are not stopped. We want to start moving. Even maybe this first uh, movement move is not the perfect fit for myself. But at least we start moving. And maybe I can wait another time to get my point or not. Resilient. You start like again, again, Scott. I would like to disagree. It's uh, not moving is my, not my first target. Moving a bit in the desired direction. If I'm thinking about a target, I wouldn't like to go just the opposite direction. I don't really get you. Can you repeat it? Uh, you stressed a bit uh, much to get the things to move i would like to have a move in a bit near yeah. that direction uh, i would like to have the complete system moving back or far away from these more or less target where, wherever it might be in that cloud but m feeding moving completely back i guess it's not worth to get into move yeah, no, no, I have no problem. It's also moving, what you're saying. The problem is what is not the contrary, the opposite of not moving is not moving, is stopping everything. The, 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 the lockdown is not moving. It's just increased the fear and, and it's, it's not happening. Maybe you make baby steps, it's, or maybe you're moving backwards in any other direction, it doesn't matter. But you have to move a little bit because that's life. Stopping is getting is being dead. Are there any other questions? Um, so when you're um, like using clean language and trying to you know resolve a, a dispute and stuff, is there a point where you can go too far with like asking more and asking more and asking more? Is there a cutoff point where you should just leave it and leave people to kind of go and think about it a bit more themselves? Yeah, I think I think almost certainly so. Unless you're up against a really tight deadline, people allowing people the time to think about things and um, reflect on it and then move gradually in their own time is going to be more successful than trying to force them to a, a resolution really rapidly. But one of, one of my favorite applications of this technique is uh, detailed in this, this slim volume, Clean Language in the Classroom by Julie McCracken. She talks about using this de-escalation technique um, in the playground rather than the classroom um, when people when her, when primary school children are basically arguing and fighting and she's using this with children small children to go you know and when you say he took your ball and he says um, you, you kicked him um, what would you both like to have happen now there it's it needs to be quick because it needs to be close to where the dispute is. 
But if you're talking about a long running and deeply embedded dispute, you might want to give the whole thing a lot more time. See, the one challenge is when people in the dispute knows about Queen language and they understand your technique or understands five whys. So usually when I have a session with Judy and her husband, they start, and, and what kind of question is your question? It's annoying me. It's stressing me. So the, one of the tricks... Same with my wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the trick is to bring lack in a conversation, very smooth into it. So people, people do not understand. So here is, if you have a like systemic background, you, can, you have to read the audience or the silence of the speech and maybe the pose in the voice. And if, then you, can, you know how far you can go or not. It's one of the tricks I use. So we've got a bunch of book recommendations. We've got a bunch yeah. of connections being made. Can we, get um, them, can, you, can we get them in the chat, those book yeah. recommendations, please? Anybody's right. putting, putting books up, we need to get them in the chat and also in the... Um, so uh, I'm going to put that up to the screen again because I can't chat and uh, facilitate mm -hmm. at the same time. I bought it uh, whilst you were speaking. Great, thank you. <laughs> so before we close... Um, is there anything else that needs to be said about the process of this session? How did you find having a session which included lots of breakout rooms and lots of small activities? Was Very that good. a good thing? Yes. Yeah, it, even with the technical problems, um, my, my um, Zoom crashed, so I had no video in the first session. Uh, mm -hmm. Even then it was useful. So uh, absolutely worth the interaction listening and then interacting with people. That's good. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Fred, what was your experience? Hi. Uh, I really enjoyed being able to share with people from different backgrounds in the breakout rooms. I think it makes it more intimate and more fluid. Thank you very much for facilitating it. Judy. Thanks for coming. Um, and thanks very much to Abigail for driving the breakouts in a baptism of fire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Excellent job. <laughs> Very well done. Still Thanks interested everyone. how it works. So open your <laughs> mic and make a random applause. Open all your mics. Thank you. Very well done. Yeah. Good job. Thanks, everybody. If we're done, we're done. Thank you. Thank you so much.